Where'd my water go? Yeah. Is it working yet? There, something's happening. Is it on? Cool, so it's working. Because on my end it's still... Okay, good. Um, so we're ready to go. So yeah, today we're going to be benching Summer Spectacular again. So that's the Gigabyte competition currently running on OC Esports. Um, this is not going to go well. This is this is going to go very very badly. Uh, just just because there's something wrong with the drivers or Windows or something. I have no idea. Um, I don't test like I don't do enough Nvidia benchmarking to know what on earth could be wrong with this. But there's something wrong with it. Um, so, yeah. Um, so basically, I don't expect to get any high scores. And my goal today is not so much to win. It's just to get really high clocks. Um, just for the hell of it. So there is a link to the, uh, the competition. That's the first stage. It'll be 3D Mark Ice Storm. Uh, and then the second stage is Catzilla. Uh, bo both of these are going to... This is gonna really suck. So let's go take a look at the setup. Oh damn, I might need my LN2 Pro. Ah, no, it's fine, I'll set it up uh, as we go. So, yeah, time to look at the disaster that we're gonna be running. So, on Wednesday, um, I did a stream where we attached the, where I attached the RX480 VRM to the GT730. I'll just go around the back so that I can actually grab the camera, point you at it. So that's there right now, and it is wired up and connected. Um, yeah. So that's kind of the setup. There's an i3 under the LN2 port. The RAM I'm using is the usual uh, 3733-rated uh, team group kit. I've had it as high as 3733, 12, 11, 11, 28 on this motherboard. Um, it doesn't really want to go much past that. The The funny thing here is, is you may, I'm not sure how well this shows up on camera, but as you can probably tell, this is kind of tweaked over. That's because we're only using one screw over there. There's another one buried in the mess of wires. There, sorta. So, the thing is, this card has a rectangular mounting pattern. Uh, this LN2 pot only fits on square mounts properly, like that's the only mount it officially supports. So it's it's attached by two screws and it's kind of tweaked over. So that'll be interesting. I'm kind of worried that it might like break the silic, like it might flex and break something, but uh, it's a GT730. No, no major loss is there. Um, so yeah, I guess, you know what, let's just fire it up. Uh, for monitoring, which actually, let's see, can I get that? Kind of in the shot, there. Wait, I'll get you, put it higher up. So, yeah, so, there we go. And the LN2 pots, that's a Raptor 4, that's like a, real, that's like a top end <laughs> LN2 pot, so, yeah, the, the pot on this is probably worth, it's like 10 times the price of the card. No, that's wrong, it's like 8 times the price of the card. And then there's the uh, Fusion 3.0, which is sort of mid-range by LN2 pot standards. So yeah, let's uh, fire it up and uh, start setting it up. And here we go, big red button. Let's hope it doesn't catch fire. It won't, I've already tested it. So right off the bat, we can see, well, you can't, but I can. Um, we have 1.13, 1.14 volts on the GPU. Um, it's going into BIOS right now. CPU is at 23 degrees. GPU is at 11. This this thermometer is currently set up to read really, really well at like minus 196 with the thermocouples I have. So at like 
minus because basically I stuck it into the LN2 and this normally would read like minus 178 or something and I basically just calibrated it down uh, until it read minus 90 uh, minus 196 because it still has like because once you do that it still has temperature range right? it's not like the it's not like the probe freezes out it's just the thermometer doesn't want to read the probe and like I don't get it why it do does that but uh um, yeah, that's currently set up for, like, benching AMD CPUs. And that is just... That's not super accurate, but it's enough. And I've used this one last time, so I know what temperature on the i3 doesn't work. And then this, it's... Yeah, it's off. That's not a correct reading right now, but it doesn't matter because I just need to know where it crashes according to this thermometer. Because I'm not going to be changing thermometers in the middle of the session. So, yeah. Um... I'm not sure how to go about this. I think max out the CPU first, because that, like, I've already done that, and and after I max out the CPU, I'll start working on the GPU. Though I do need to check how well the, how good the contact between the LN2 pot and the GPU core is. I'm really not sure with just two screws. It's really iffy. So actually, you know what, I'll just take it into Windows right now. Because it is at 5 gigahertz. Um, let me just switch you to the BIOS view. Boop. Uh, so yeah, it is at 5 gigahertz. 4.5 gigahertz on core. Um, memory is at 3200 right now because higher frequencies are a bit dodgy on this motherboard. Well, yeah, kind of dodgy with this MOBO. But, let's see, voltages. Actually, that should boot right now. Well, whatever. Three degrees on the CPU. And it's not restarting because I decided to set up the memory. Oh, there we go. Hopefully it didn't wipe. It crashed. I don't know, it didn't. Also, I'm on like my third Windows installation today, so I am not a happy camper. Th this thing has just so many software issues. I have no idea why the, like every time I try to bench NVIDIA cards, it's just awful. Everything sucks. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Ow, damn it. Cold. Overfilled the thermos. Damn it. Okay, so we're in Windows. CPU is at minus seven. That's nice. There we go. I think I'll glaze the CPU first. Um, and I'll get. Precision 16 opened up to see how the GPU is running temperature-wise, because this, like, I'll, I'll, I just want to see how quickly temperature changes register on the thermometer here versus what the operating system sees. Because if they go in sync, then I know the thermal paste isn't, like, catastrophically bad on the installation. So, let's go straight for Ice Storm. For people who just joined, you haven't missed anything. I've only just started up the system. Benchmarks, ice storm. So also, the, actually, I need to test if this works on the capture card. Um, the thing about ice storm is you can actually change the resolution at which the benchmark runs by just changing your resolution in the NVIDIA control panel. So that is extremely pleasant. I think what doesn't work is if I try to run a high refresh rate. Oh no, that works. Cool. So we can run 75 hertz, 800, and six, yeah, 800 by 600. So this basically makes Ice Storm score better because it's such a miserable pile of garbage software. I, like, awful benchmark, really awful. 
can't believe this is a thing. Like, oh yeah, you can just score higher by just running less pixels on the benchmark because it can't figure out how to... Well, actually, to be fair, 3D Mark do include a version of Ice Storm which runs at its own resolution regardless of what the system is set to. But for some reason, the competition is on Ice Storm this, not Ice Storm Unlimited, and regular Ice Storm just changes based on what resolution you set it on the desktop, so... Yeah. And actually, one of the tricks I figured out, like, my, so far my highest score on Ice Storm was done by... So basically, Ice Storm scales its inter like render resolution off of your horizontal desktop resolution. So my best Ice Storm score was done by basically setting 300, making a custom resolution in the NVIDIA control panel, which was like 300 by 400. So horizontal 300 and 400 tall. And then I set that, and it scores higher than 800 by 600, so it's great. Love this benchmark. Great benchmark. Best benchmark ever. Seriously. It's almost as bad as all the old 3D marks, where it's like, oh yeah, you have to run the test in a specific order, because then they score higher for some ungodly reason. Oh, for people wondering why all the why it looks so ugly, uh, I have 9,000 LOD set right now, and LOD is level of detail, and basically it's a trick to make the GPU uh, not render the textures properly, which is legal because again, Ice Storm, everything is legal. You can basically uh, like there's people currently on the Ice Storm ranking who are outscoring me at like 200 megahertz lower clocks. Because Ice Storm. Um, and, and I, honestly, that, that's why I've basically given up on getting a good score today. Because Ice Storm is terrible. Just gonna set the GPU to... We're at 27, this has gone up. Should have run that windowed. Why? I've already tried at like 90,000 LOD, and at that point it doesn't matter. Um, like, it doesn't do anything any longer. And I'm actually going to do... What I'm going to do is I want to do benchmarks... What? Your hardware may not be compatible? Are you... Kit? Your settings can affect your score. Yeah, G-Sync before you run the... Oh, apparently also running 144 hertz display makes your score go higher too. This benchmark, seriously. It's just, like, how is this a thing? I don't think AMD cards do this. I think this is like NVIDIA only thing where you can basically run a completely different resolution and get a completely different score by just running the benchmark at lower resolution and higher refresh rate. Also, music. glazed great but ah, sounds a bit better it's a bit faster so I just want to run a bit of windowed fire strike to see how the temperatures go loop windowed and we'll start at 1.4 volts so I'll just bring the GPU up to that we're at 1.3 and this does have a bit of v-droop um, well actually yeah, technically we droop. Um, the card, so there's, it's not actually my wire connection. Um, it turns out that for some reason when the RX480 VRM goes under load, it drops 15 millivolts just on its own. It just does that. Can't find a fix for it. I think it's because it's broken. Um, I, well, I think I broke the current sense on it and then I didn't fix it correctly. So it kind of does that. It's not a huge issue. Um, on a GT730. On a bigger graphics card, I wouldn't really want to want use it.
go. Twenty-eight. Okay. Don't include the demo. We're on loop. Enable windowed. Okay. Uh, and I actually wanted lower resolution. Like that. And I want it running at re lower resolution because it still puts enough load on the GPU to heat it up. I just want to be able to see precision over it as well. Oh yeah, and uh, Fire Strike, if you have a high LOD, looks like that, <laughs> if, you, if you were wondering. So, yeah, temperatures seem to be about in sync. I mean, this isn't really changing, that isn't really changing, which makes sense, because that thing is several kilograms of copper. This is going a bit slower, but it's to be expected, I think. Let's see what happens if I pour. So that's now at 18, 17, 34, 33. Yeah, they're, eh? Not really dropping, it's 4, 32. Well, it looks like it works to me. No, catastrophically slower. I think I might need two thermoses for today's session. Oh, and this is glazed properly at this point. Pour, pour, pour. And it's just gonna drink it. That's the crazy thing. It's like if you have a completely dry LN2 pot and pour LN2 in it, you'll see it bubble around for a bit. But if you build up a good ice layer, you can pour LN2 and it disappears practically instantly because the lead and frost effect basically gets uh, overcome by the ice. And I think the reason why is because the ice layer, well, it's not really, well, it's sort of ice, snow, frost layer. Um, it acts sort of like a cloth, because if you stick a cloth in LN2, it'll soak. Whereas if you like pour LN2 on a solid surface, it'll run off on its own. But yeah, so I think we're at minus seven on the GPU now. And what's precision reading? 11. Eh, it's not. Drop the flower. So the cool thing is, I, GT730s should be able to read uh, negative temperatures on their own, like in software. 4 versus 15. Yeah, so we're at minus 11, 29. There's about 20 degrees of difference between this thermometer. Well, there's also the fact that this is reading like seven degrees low or eight degrees low at any given time until you hit like minus 96 ranges. So I think I'm, I'm happy with that. So, okay, CPU is at minus 80. So we're not far from maxing that out. Fire strike. Oh, that crashed, right? How pleasant of you. So, now GPU is at minus 21, and that's minus 34. Cool. So I'll go get more LN2, and I think we'll max out the CPU, and then we'll start working on the GPU, just because I've done... Well, I've worked with the G CPU a lot more already, so... Yeah. Maxing out the CPU here will be just a case of dropping it. So right now it's at minus 77. I'll just drop it down to minus 120. 
Below minus 130, it doesn't work, but at minus 120, it can already run six gigahertz, which is the most it can run on this anyway. Um, so I'll do that. I'll let that, that's sitting at like minus 20-ish something. So I'll let the Raptor start glazing as well. Not that the GT730 needs a glaze. It's just, it'll happen on its own anyway if you just let it sit. So. Minus 75. Minus 90, 100. I think I overdid it. We might actually hit the cold bug at this. Eh, no, it'll stop. Good. Okay, so frequency, 60, 55. Eh. Advanced voltage, CPU, 1.8. Doesn't go higher. Um, that does go higher, but it's there, eh, well. Actually, how high? Right, that goes to 1.4, I'll max that. Um, 0.45, yeah. And this was sort of like that. And that should run 6 gigahertz at this point. Um, DRAM, 1.8. That's a bit high. Uh, 1.8. This will turn off. Yeah, okay, that turned off. Wait. Is that out of batteries? No. Oh, that's fine. But so the problem is I can't actually run as much max memory as I'd like to, um, which with B die basically means you can't run as high clocks. So I'm I'm gonna actually go for relatively relaxed settings on this RAM, like 17, 18, 39. I think. This should be, I'll set that to 32,000, that'll work. 400 to that, and that's good to go like that. So it's just easier to run 4,000 at loose settings than it is to run 37, 33 at tight, so that's why I'm setting it up like this. Six, five. On the Apex, I could probably run these settings at 4133, but this motherboard is a is not the Apex. <laughs> it's a lot worse at memory overclocking. So, and I let the CPU hit 90, so that's not great. Hopefully, I didn't screw up the memory. Ah, yeah, it's working. Yeah, we're all good on that. So, here we go. So, from what I've heard from other people, the GT730 cold bugs, like, well, yeah, cold bugs around minus 80. So I can't pull it that far down. Voltage wise, we're 1.4. So I think, right off of the bat of this, I should be able to run 650. Because it does 600 on 1.4 air-cooled. And 470 on the memory. And K-Boost is engaged. Apply, and that crashed instantly. Oh wait, it didn't. I'm gonna give it 1.5. It's already at minus 30 something, so... Well, minus 24. And that died. Great. We'll just reset that. I really wish I had a slower LN2 pot on the CPU. Because this thing goes up and down really quick. No, it doesn't want to... Ooh, what the hell? That sounds like the...
Sounds like cold bug. Honestly, but we're not. This shouldn't be cold enough to be causing issues. Okay, the PSU is being stupid. Where is that switch? Are we seriously cold bug? Could it be the GPU? No, no, that wouldn't be throwing this. That would. If it was the GPU, it would fire up and sit there looking at me like an idiot. So, what on earth isn't working? that CPU voltage read out? Yeah, CPU is not getting voltage. How on earth? We're at minus 80. There's no way this should be still not working. Okay, we'll reset the BIOS and see if that... Minus 84. How on earth is it not booting right now? Power supply is being really dumb right now. It keeps trying to fire up for some reason. There we go, system drain of power. What the hell? There we go, 0 0.85. That's stock voltage for the CPU, so why isn't it... Yeah, okay, there's, there's the... Stupid freaking... What the hell? That shouldn't be possible. This is a minus 77. If this was a cold bug, then the CPU has magically decided that it doesn't want to... What the hell? Could have been the... Wait. I'm going to drop the GPU down. Then I'm going to turn it off. And we will see if it keeps looping again. Thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, minus forty. Cause that's the like the CPU really shouldn't have a problem with minus a hundred. 
But the GPU, I could get. I could understand that. Oh, whoa. Oh, no, it's booting. It's still booting. What the hell? So, cold boot bug at minus 70. This motherboard has just decided to suck very badly. I have no idea what that is. That is so weird. That is bizarre. Oh well. Unless this probe is suddenly reading really, really wrong. In which case it would make sense, but... That would suck. Ugh, okay. Less memory frequency, just in case that was the... 3600. That's like the last multiplier on this motherboard that actually works. 36. Above that, it's just steadily bigger and bigger problems. But still, that's not good. That is really confusing. Oh, wait. No, that should have been fine. That should have been a turbo. Right, actually, that might be a better idea. Load. 3K base, advanced frequency, 60, 50, 3600, 16, 16, 36, no, 36, 36. advanced voltages, 4, 1.8, 1.3, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 
Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it's the GPU. You crash... The GPU crashes, the system stops working. Praise NVIDIA. Breaks the entire computer when the GPU doesn't want to turn off. I'm gonna try heat up the memory chips because they are right on the edge of the PCB or the card, but this sucks. This really sucks. this pile of garbage graphics card. Never, ever works. Scores like garbage, runs like garbage, doesn't like the cold. Well, actually, it runs fine on air, but... Yeah, okay. I'm gonna let that sit for a bit. Evidently, the problem... Okay, so I can't touch the memory clock once we're... I don't get why everybody's so obsessed with GPUs having Samsung memory. It's like every GPU I've had with Samsung RAM just breaks instantly once you pull it below minus 20 degrees. Just completely fails to function. It needed to be at like minus 25 last time before it booted, didn't it? Like on the GPU side of things. I'm not hearing the relay. Nice thing, nice thing about this power supply is it, well, it's annoying if you're restarting a lot, but the relay on this power supply clicks pretty much every single time it tries to power on. So it's really easy to tell if the system's trying to fire up or not. And the GPU seems to have, oh, there we go. It's working again. And the BIOS is wiped. Of course it's wiped, because the motherboard just... Ah. So I have to bench the... This is really... This is going to go so well. So there's no chance this is hitting 2 gigahertz core clock, because I can't get it cold enough to do that. Because it'll just crash instantly. Ah. Yeah, the, the RX 480 GTR also had Samsung memory, and that also went really, really well on LN2. Um, I remember that. It was like, oh yeah, let's put it on LN2 below a minus 20 degrees. It would crash randomly. Which is pretty much the signature, like, Samsung B-Die randomly loses stability as it gets colder. Uh, Samsung HC15, which is a low voltage memory chip from DDR3 era, which I have quite a, like, I had a whole kit of, like, four sticks of that. Now I only have two. HC15, it gets... Like, it gets to 10 degrees ambient, stops working completely. It just goes into Windows and blue screen, blue screen, blue screen. You can't do anything about it. Praise Samsung. I am never... <laughs> like, the Vita isn't such a problem because you can just, you know, it's, it's hanging off the side. Like, it's not directly under the LN2, but uh, on the GPU, it's just... You can't do anything because it's right... It's literally right under the LN2 pot. It's going to be cold regardless of what I do. Um, there goes the first ambulance of today's stream. I'm going to need an ambulance. <laughs> I'm going to blow myself up at this rate. Using this graphics card. Uh. Horrific, pile of, horrific pile of garbage. At least the, like, 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 no, there's no lessons to be learned here, because this is just everything I always hated about every, like, ugh. Okay, so don't pour LN2 on the GPU, it'll break. The entire system. So, I basically need to figure out where the memory clocks to again, because it might only be able to run at stock at this point. Which really, really sucks. And, and this is a GT730, so, you know, 64-bit memory bus. 
massive memory bottleneck. This thing scales more from 10 megahertz of memory than 100 megahertz of core clock. So th this is just perfect. Absolutely like, this is exactly what I wanted to be doing today. People who complained about, oh, I have Elkita, it clocks really high, but the performance isn't there. Well, Samsung doesn't clock on liquid nitrogen. I don't know what the hell to do about this. It's like, uh. uh I tried vault modding the memory on the RX 480. It doesn't do anything. Um, quite, the, the memory controller on the RX 480 is the problem. It's not quite strong enough. So, you, and, and the thing is, the memory controller is also really fragile. I don't think that's an ambulance. That might have been cops. Nope, that's an ambulance. <laughs> Second one already. Uh, yeah, no, but I did try to volt mod an RX480 for extra memory voltage. Doesn't do anything. I tried extra memory controller voltage. That did actually give you a little bit of extra core memory clock, except it kills the card really, really quick. So it's pointless. Like, there's nothing you can do. Uh, on RX 480s to get the memory higher. Uh, advanced memory 3600. What temperature are we at? Let's drop it all the way down back to minus 110. Praise Samsung's like, you know, that's, glow flow should make memory. On air cooling, the glow flow RAM would just run like, it would run on like 10 watts of stick. So it would actually need like a heat sink and stuff. But if you put it anywhere near cold, it runs way faster than everything else. Because glow flow's horrifically leaky manufacturing processes do have the benefit of actually scaling with cold and not complaining every time the temperature drops below zero. Uh, Okay, I think at this point I have everything set up and we can boot. I think. Oh, it's minus 97 again. Intel's for No, Intel should make RAM. They, they, they could also make RAM that doesn't suck on cold completely. Suck. Um, boot, please. Please. Broken again. I don't think, 3600, 16, 16, 36. Memory voltage, maybe? I don't think I screwed that up. Oh, there we go, it works. Yeah, I was just, please just be training. Don't tell me BIOS wipe error. Oh no, this, yay, BIOS, well, that's not BIOS wipe, that's, boot failure detected, which is fine. That That's like soft reset, so. Advanced frequency. I think I missed, messed up one of the voltages. 1.5, 0 0.75, 1.5. CPU core. You know what, I'll drop the CPU core clock, just make, make it easier on myself. So annoying, it was doing 6 gigahertz so easy last time. Like the last uh, stream where I was running LN2 for this competition, I spent the entire thing on at 6 gigahertz pretty much. So I don't get why now it's suddenly such a problem. It's bo not booting again. Did I not seek the memory right or something? No? Okay. I don't, I didn't hear a click, so it shouldn't throw me a boot failure. Good. We're going into Windows! At least the GTX 1070 has Micron memory. That's Micron GDDR5 which also doesn't really scale with cold, but at least from what I... Uh, machine check. Why? Work, damn it. That's not so much to request from you. 
No, but the GTX 1070 is micron memory, which as far as I'm aware doesn't have any issues with cold. It's not, but it just doesn't go very far. So, this is just going to keep crashing at this point, isn't it? Useless pile of garbage. Can never win! Literally never! Why would anything I try to do ever work? Oh, and now it's boot loop. Now it's boot looping again. Why? Um... What am I doing wrong? The GPU's at minus 19, the CPU's at minus 96. Which admittedly isn't, like... Ah. This really shouldn't be this difficult. I have no idea what, what this has, like... Why this can't just stop complaining for six seconds and work. Like, I haven't even run Ice Storm this entire stream. Like, notice that? Like, I haven't even started the benchmark once. Well, actually, no, I've run it once. As stock clocks, so that doesn't count. <laughs> Useless pile of garbage. I have no idea what the what, what what is wrong with it at this point. Like literally no idea. This is like it's boot looping like it has a cold bug at minus ninety, which is ridiculous. How's the RAM? This is relatively warm. By I had more success with an e-powered GTX 570. Like, that, that, that's like something you would expect not to work at all, but no, that, that works better than this. Badly e-powered GTX 570 versus this, geez, like, ah. Work, please? If we get into Windows and I get a Catzilla score, I'm just putting two volts on the GPU because I've had it. I, I've really had it at this point. It's just like, it doesn't even want to boot. Oh, yay, BIOS has been reset again. Lovely, thank you. Useless pile of, I'm like, I'm gonna have to save an actual profile at this rate because this is getting ridiculous. Oh, and then it also has the little profile bug, but that hasn't showed up today for some reason. So that, that's, that's interesting. Um, like last stream, I had to have a whole second flash stick in, plugged into this the whole time because uh, otherwise it wouldn't work. Um, it wouldn't, like it wouldn't remember profiles at all. So it's nice. Profiles seem to be working, kinda. 3200 memory. I can't possibly screw anything up with that, can I? 16, 16, 36. Work. Please just work. You know what? Maybe I should just run XMP. Run profile one. Okay, advanced memory settings. Auto. Because it is on XMP, so hopefully at least XMP will work because the XMP profile on these sticks is decently fast. Um,
Come on, you have to be able to boot at least XMP. Thank you. Thank you. I might not take a... You know, this computer is really, really lucky I don't own a hammer or a blowtorch because at this point I probably would have used them on the motherboard and the GPU. <laughs> the motherboard really, like, it's not really its fault. It's not meant for this kind of thing, but... The GPU gonna get it. GPU gonna get two volts. Props to Gigabyte for making a competition that's meant to be low cost, but the benchmark selection and hardware selection is just like the worst. Because this stuff is infuriating. Okay, 600 core. Do that. Yes, pile of garbage, yes. You can do 600 core. That's, that's, that's relieving to see, but the memory has gone literally down, so. I need to buy like some kind of heater elements and just stick them on memory modules every time I'm running. It'd be really cool if they had like an integrated temperature system for themselves. 650. Yeah, it's not core clock. Core clock is fine. CPU is happy. Mem clock offset. Let's see if this thing can do at least 100. I, I, I'm starting to doubt even that. It used to do like really decent memory clock, but like I could almost run 1500 megahertz, but right now it's just garbage. 303. 150. It, it'll crash instantly in idle, so I'll just work it up. 1328, 200. Cool. I think we'll... Two f nope, that, that would definitely crash. <laughs> okay, let's go for 300. I, I'm not patient. Even though I'm fully aware that it'll, like, if it crashes, it, it's gonna be hell on Earth for the next minute or so. It's, it's like, I, I can't wait. 700. If I can do 1600 core, I'll be happy, relatively. Please don't crash, you pile of trash. Okay, so we're at minus 10 on that. Um, let's go for that ice storm. NVIDIA control panel and prepare for 300 resolution. This is gonna be fun. So, the trick to running ice storm well 3D Mark won't actually open if you put your resolution too low, so that's another thing to keep in mind. Let me give it more voltage. 1.55. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, it crashed again. Why did you freaking... The memory got cold, didn't... It's not even that cold! Useless! It's not gonna work again. I hate... Samsung GDDR5. Very much. I'm gonna be benching a 1300 memory instead of like... On air cooling, this card's actually really not bad because it's like other... Like I actually have on, on air cooling, by frequencies at least, this is one of the best GT730s in the competition. Too bad it's in my hands, so I have no idea why it's scoring way lower than everybody else's, but uh... Um... Yeah, maybe I overdid it on the core clock, but 3D Mark. Let's go 660. Okay, you know what? No. 666. Apply. 250. Apply. I'll go for that. Ice Storm. So now we do NVIDIA control panel. And th this UI is just so bad. Compared to, like, even Catalyst is better than this. 
because, like, here's another fun glitch. So, wait, did it seriously forget all my... Okay, whatever. I'm just gonna do 300 by 320. It doesn't matter what you set as your vertical. Um, it just might not work if you set your vertical too high. And then 75... No, that's... 75, damn it, idiotic. There we go. Yes. This is what we want to run at. <laughs> so, this is how you get a good score in Ice Storm, because it's such a good, well-written piece of software. Set that. Apply. Yes, we want to keep this. Then you go into Ice Storm, and look, you can just about hit the run button. That's really the only requirement. The ability to hit the run button. So I'm going to pull the CPU back down, because it is getting a bit warm. It's at minus 65. Quite frankly, for 5.5 gigahertz isn't a problem, but... Yeah, and... Run! Run, garbage! The monitor... This monitor doesn't go beyond 75 hertz. And plus, it's on the capture card, so I can't actually... Like, yeah. Do anything. I don't even need to pour, like, the temperature on the GPU doesn't change. It's not artifacting, that's a... That, that's progress. So, evidently, 1.55 volts is good for, like, almost... Nah, it's quite a bit away from 1600 megahertz. Uh, I can't believe the RAM on this GPU is so useless, though. Now, speaking of Samsung memory, when I was doing my... Recently, I did another 8 gigahertz attempt, which the Facebook people would know about, the people who follow me on Facebook. So I've managed 8,092 8, uh, 8, megahertz at this point. So a nice jump from my old score of like just over 8 gigahertz. It was like 8,006 megahertz. So when I did that 8,092 8, megahertz... Um, I actually had to, like, midway through the session, I had to switch from a, one stick of Samsung memory to a Hynix stick, because that, Sam, that Samsung memory was just completely killing itself. Like, it was just blue screening non-stop. I went into Windows blue screen, got to Windows blue screen. Because Samsung doesn't like cold. This is really hard to dose the LN2 in the pot. <laughs> it's like if I pour too much, the temperature is going to fall off a cliff. I don't think that's actually better than my current best score because the memory clock is so low. This is not fun. It's my current best. Um, stage two. Oh, it's actually better. Yes, progress. <laughs> Horrific pile of trash benchmark. So, uh, this is just going to be me coming up with steadily. The thing is, I'm not, I don't want to, like, I want to keep this relatively family... Like, I like to not... I try not to swear too much. Like, and at this rate, I, I think I'm not going to be able to... Like, this rate, I'm not going to be able to control... Keep it under control. Because this is just infuriating. Oh, and mo... Oh, yeah, so my graphics score is actually lower because the memory clock is so trash at this point, but... The physics score is up by about 10,000 points, so that's nice. Um... So that's why this score is overall better. Which really, if you look at how 3D Mark does its uh, score calculations, whichever of your scores is lower, it tends to drive your overall higher. So if like 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 if I got this from 75,000 to 85,000, which it should do once it hits six gigahertz somehow, um, which at the current rate is never going to happen. But assuming I could hit six gigahertz, that would be a really nice big boost to my points uh, on the benchmark. So. Yeah. Where's that third CPU-Z window? So this being a gigabyte competition, you also have to include a screenshot of the motherboard you're using. Full screen. Um, summer Spectacular. Bye. Fortunately, they also require a validation uh, through, I don't get why they need the validation link. It's like, no, 
everybody's going to be posting scores which are wildly inaccurate because everybody's going to be running the resolution hack and the LOD and all that, so it's like, why even bother with the validations at this point? I really don't get it, but whatever. Rules are rules. Save. There. Really wish I could run the higher memory clock, because that's like a... It's a GT730, that's a huge problem on this thing. It's massive memory bottleneck. Because I'm down like 7,000 points on uh, graphics. Yeah, it's at minus four. Please don't crash. Good, useless pile of garbage. So now we're gonna do 1600 megahertz. Um, let's go and let's see. NVIDIA control panel never fails to disappoint you. Where did my resolution go? Does anybody know where my resolution went? It's here. Why is it not? Yeah. Useless. Garbage. Everything about NVIDIA cards is garbage. Cancel. Can we edit test? Okay. What? Already? Yeah, already. I know it already exists. It's not available in my settings, you idiotic program. Okay. So I think last time I solved this by just steadily making more and more custom resolutions. You know what? Let's try 200. Let's try this. Um, this is gonna get really bad, but 240 by uh, 400. That should still work. 75. Test. Oh, that works. Worse than ever, but it still works. Yes, keep that resolution. <laughs> oh god, this is awful. CPU's at minus 50. Got a poor, or this will... Or I'll lose my i3 at the cost of the useless graphics card with the useless driver. I can't believe it. Like, this, I, I can't believe people say NVIDIA drivers are better than AMD's. It's like when in AMD's driver, I can make a custom resolution and it doesn't forget it at random. In the NVIDIA driver, it just disappears. Because NVIDIA. But then again, like, I guess most NVIDIA users don't care that the custom resolution thing is completely broken or something. Ugh. Okay, so... At this point, yeah, see, now, now it shows a useless pile of garbage. Basically, I have to make the resolution every single time. This would be nice to be, like, collapsible, but whatever. Um, I need to get 3D Mark into the benchmarks. Get to Ice Storm. That way, I, I can actually hit the run button. That would be really not great if... I tried to run the benchmark and the run button disappeared, which I've done when I was testing even lower resolutions. Like, this is my third install of Windows because my second install of Windows became unusable when I set the resolution to 120 pixels by 120 pixels and could no longer access the, the slider down here to get through the resolution menu. So, yeah. That, that's a thing. Um, I'm going to pull the CPU down. It is at minus 60. Seventeen. Still too temp warm. I want it at like minus 20-ish. Well, let's run. Garbage, garbage, garbage. Yeah, uh, so I actually tried to fix it with a uh, second monitor and everything, and for some reason it kept defaulting to like my 120 by 120. It just defaulted to that at that point. I have no idea. I gave up on that install. It was taking too much time to try fix it. Uh, 
It's not artifacting. That might actually be a side effect of the super low resolution because it's doing less work. So it's running cooler and that's interesting on AMD cards you actually get a stability boost by running tessellation off. Just a dribble of LN2 otherwise it'll crash. Well, since there's actually nothing on the screen right now, we can blow this up a bit, couldn't we? There. Point you more towards the system. There. Minus 20, minus 72. Still minus 20. <laughs> the card doesn't put out any heat. You know, I'm starting to think that my idiotic dry ice thing would have actually worked better on this than the than the LN2. For people not aware of the idiotic dry ice thing, that's a stream from last year where the GT710, similar software issues, my scores sucked on that card as well. Um, but yeah, no, I was running dry ice on that with no interface fluid and the way I was doing it was I had like a plastic bottle and I just crammed the dry ice into the uh, passive heat sink of, that eight, of the Asus card. That hasn't gone up, has it? It's like barely it's barely improved. I can't see anything. What, what, what's our graphics score? Eh. Let's see, graphics, 124. So that's actually gone up. Physics fell off a cliff. Eh, I don't know why it does that. Let's see if I can overclock <laughs> at this resolution. Please, give me precision. Actually, I won't, probably won't be able to... Eh? Oh, yeah, I can do it. I can. Wait, I won't be able to hit the applause. <gasps> I can. Oh, yay. We can actually... I don't have to deal with the NVIDIA driver for getting my crappy resolution settings. Uh, 720. No, that's not high enough. 750. Give it 1.6. I need to do something like... I need to get logarithmic potentiometers because this thing is... The more I... Get, the closer I go to maximum voltage, the faster it goes. So, there we go. Dribble more LN2 in there. It's not going to run 300, so let's minimize that. Go back to 3D mark. Oh, wait, I can't get to benchmark section, can I? Oh, uh, more tests. Incredible! <laughs> I can navigate this. <laughs> okay. Um, well, let's go for it. Can't get any worse. You know, maybe as I crank up the core voltage, it'll suppress some of the heat transfer through the PCB on the GT730, and I might be actually able to bring up the memory clock. Uh, this is awful. <laughs> Somebody's saying this is the best stream so far. From my perspective, this is by far the worst stream ever. <laughs> there's nothing. <laughs> there's a, like barely an actual thing on the screen. I'm having to fight the freaking UI just to get the benchmark running. I'm never benching NVIDIA again. But apparently it's just Ice Storm that, like, really, that you can do this in. Because the other benchmarks will say that you've changed the resolution or whatever. Though apparently on NVIDIA, 144 hertz displays always help with performance or something. So, yeah. I, I need to get, like, if I want to bench NVIDIA's, I need to get, like, a 200 hertz display. <laughs> because it raises your score. This is so stupid. Uh, like, that is just beyond what I'm willing to tolerate in terms of weird software stuff. Or when your monitor affects your overall score. Score went down. Useless pile of garbage. I think this physics score just, yeah, physics score just keeps getting lower and lower and lower. How does that work? 
How does this keep going down? Okay, so the good news is I know how to, like, I know that I can run. Uh-oh. 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 Oh, Hal. Oh, no. 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 Oh. Oh, great. Um, display settings. No, this is not... Okay. Advance. Please save me, Microsoft. Anything. I'll take anything. Yes, that is good. Uh Okay, that, that was close. I was worried I wouldn't be able to get out of that. Oh man, that was really, really close. <laughs> okay, so that dis- Okay, great. So 240 is about, about the limit of maximum tweakage on this system. That, that's, you can't tweak more than that. But I'll try to get 6 gigahertz CPU at this point. Just because the physics score is probably going to carry this anyway. So. Yeah. Freaking NVIDIA. Well, this right here has just convinced me that my no NVIDIA poli policy is a really good policy. Nothing newer than the 500 series, because the 500 series is still like that generation of NVIDIA GPU where they pull 300 watts, they're inefficient, they're dumb as bricks, they're, they don't complain, there's no boost algorithm. You know, they don't try to be smarter than you. Which I find infuriating. So, I'm gonna... So, 500 series I'm happy with. And I'm never touching anything newer again, because this is what happens. Unless there's like, no, it's like, no. I, I boycotted XTU completely just because it's a dumb benchmark when it only runs on Intel. So I guess I can completely never touch an NVIDIA card again. On the same principle of the cards just suck. <laughs> to work with. I mean, sure, for gaming the performance is fine, but I'm not trying to play games here, am I? No, actually, playing games with an, no. That doesn't work. Playing games on an NVIDIA is fine. Playing games with an NVIDIA doesn't work. <laughs> it's broken. It's like, card please, just run at higher voltage. Nope, power limit. Card please, don't throttle every time the temperature goes up by one degree. Nope, boost table is dumb. Uh, 60, do I have my voltages set up correctly? Cause I just need to drop the temperature low enough. Yeah, okay, that's good. F10, please work. I know you're finding that difficult today, but please work. I might even not blow you up. Well, that just boot looped. That boot looped again. The NVIDIA graphics card is actively making this clock slower. Because it used to do 6 gigahertz, well, admittedly on a GT710, so you can't blame NVIDIA. <laughs> oh, I think it might have actually kicked in and I just killed it. Oops. There we go. Back. Now he's going to tell me you wipe the BIOS. I'm gonna show this motherboard wiping the BIOS. 
I'm gonna wipe the floor with the motherboard. Yeah, it wiped itself. Stupid pile of garbage. Though it boot like it wiped itself and booted at minus 103. So I have no idea what the hell it's what the hell is wrong with it. And the keyboard's being slow. This BIOS just like whenever the BIOS drops to like 800 megahertz, everything starts lagging. So actually, I need to load up the five gigahertz profile, which somehow is still here. Just, this thing is possessed. Like seriously, it just decided that it hates me and it's not gonna work. After I'm done with all of this NVIDIA stuff, I can finally go and do like the Fury X, four-way Fury X stuff, and, and, and work on cards that, quite frankly, don't overclock, but at least they're not completely broken and don't have this kind of problems every time you do anything. Um, I don't want to run loose timings. Whatever. We're, we're just going to run it like that. Uh, All good. Oh wait, is it 733, isn't it? No, 3733. It's not gonna boot. Oh, it booted. Cr this thing is just random at this point. Like, if I didn't know any better, I would, like... This is just so... Page, fault in non-page area. That's memory not stable. Unfortunately, I don't know if that's the GPU memory or the CPU memory or the hard drive. <laughs> Randomly decides to use the hard drive as memory. So... Advanced voltage settings. CPU core voltage. 1.3. Why are these so low? 1.3. Wait, what the hell are you doing, you stupid... What? Everything is broken! Everything is literally on fire at this point. It's at 1.3 volts and running 5.7 gigahertz. I... Everything is broken. Literally everything, just nothing, like, everything just gave up on life. Windows, please. Thank you, Windows. At least, when you're running an NVIDIA card, you can rely on Microsoft to not make your life harder. <laughs> oh god, this is so bad. I hate this card. I hate this motherboard. Though, I can't, like... To be fair, the GPU also isn't exactly designed for running liquid nitrogen. But... I can't help myself, but hate it. That's 1600, 750. I mean, we might still be able to do core, two gigahertz core clock if I underclock the memory so that it doesn't instantly crash the moment we go um, below like minus 25 or something. Yeah, this, I need logarithmic potentiometers at this rate. This is getting ridiculous because I can, like, I can, basically, I don't even need to move my finger and the voltage goes up at this point. So, we're at minus 26. 
Time to see if NVIDIA control panel lets me set r trash resolutions. Of course it won't, because, you know, that, that'd be... That'd be like normal stuff. Test. I think if I just do this, it'll work. Yes. I like that. Good. CPU's getting a little bit warm. Oh, I made a new one. Okay. Close that. Apply. I don't want to know. Like, 240 horizontal is about as... 120 is the lowest you can set, but it's unusable at that point. Literally, like, I couldn't even do anything. So, more tests. Ice Storm? That is Ice Storm, right? Yeah, that's Ice Storm. I don't even know what I'm trying to click on at this point. No, so the thing is, I need to run high refresh rate, so internal lace doesn't work. Because it's technically... Well, the driver says it's lower refresh rate, and I'll trust it on that. At least it's not artifacting. Even though it's, like, relatively warm by, like, LN2 overclocking standards, it's, like, minus 10, maybe. Probably warmer now. It's probably above zero. How much water do I... Oh, yeah, it's <laughs> just... It's just straight water on the back of the GPU. It's not even ice. That's, that's... Ice is nice. Water isn't. Water's bad. <laughs> no, the monitor literally doesn't go above the refresh rate. Like, I've tested with my AMD system, which clocked every other monitor I have to 80, 80 hertz and up. And this monitor doesn't go above 75. The problem with the minus 100-ish temperature range is you pour LN2 down the pot and it boils so fast it sort of blows up. I think it finished. Yes, it finished. Oh, look, 110,000. It's still a trash score compared to everybody else on the leaderboard, but I'll take it. I'll take it because this thing is trash. This is like, ugh. Never benching NVIDIA again. Also, never benching a Samsung memory-based card on LN2. This is just ridiculous. Right, I actually won't be able to change the display resolution from that. We need to go through display settings. Thank you, Microsoft. <laughs> the only advance. Uh, look, we can actually set 1920. Apply. Keep the changes. There we go, and now we can take our screenshot, and then we have to restart again, otherwise the physics score, like the physics score gets steadily worse. So, yeah, that that's, that's not a good thing, but not really anything I can do about that. Because every time I rerun, the physics score keeps going down, so. Yeah, we're gonna have to restart after this and go through the entire painful process again. I wonder if, Oh, this this is dumb. So I can't actually access it through display settings. Nah. I have to do the... Yeah, I have to dance with the NVIDIA driver every time I want to get my resolution low enough. Ugh. Uh, main board. The worst thing about this is, is if you try to launch 3D Mark at, like, resolutions like 800 by 600, it won't even launch. Or below that, I think. 600, 800 by 600, it still it launches, but below that, it doesn't. So, you know, that, that's extremely pleasant. I 
There we go. Uh, main board, memory, CPU, GPU. Cool. Full screen. <sighs> Save. I was the first guy at 100, uh, 165,000 score. His Windows isn't completely broken like mine is. I, I don't know what it is, but for some reason, mine just scores like trash. No matter how hard I try, so I've given up. I, I've just completely given up on ever getting this, this system to score properly for the clocks it's running. Because it's not going to do it. And I, quite frankly, don't care any longer. I just want to max out, you know what, let's try max out the GPU clock. I'm actually going to drop the memory clock for this. We'll see if I can run 2 gigahertz. There! That's the best way to run the memory! Minus 400. Thank you. Because um, now it shouldn't crash. Maximum memory underclock. Because I just want to see what it'll do on, like, I want to see if the card can even do 2 gigahertz core. Because that's really all I care about, is like, this, this is going to score like trash no matter what I do. So. Just because of the Windows issues I have. I need like minus well less than this <laughs> that's for sure um, minus 40 on that minus 25 there this is at 85 drop that down whoops minus 30 on the trash GPU Don't crash. Minus 44. I'm going to crank up the voltage some more. 1.7. And it died. Why did it die? Oh no. It's fine. It's still running. We're at 1.72 volts on the GPU core. Let's see if I can do plus 800. This should go up to plus 1 gigahertz. So, we should be, well, actually over 1 gigahertz. Otherwise, this is probably won't be enough. Hundred, eight fifty. Wait, where does this max out? Why, that doesn't give me a 2 gigahertz. This software doesn't go high enough, damn it! Show overclocking, yes. Performance level zero. Wait, I, I don't get NVIDIA at all. Oh, that's better. <laughs> Uh, wait, but that's... Isn't that idle? Apply defaults. Why is there P8 and P0 and then level one, 0 and level 1? 
Who makes this software? It's like everything NVIDIA related is made by... P0 on AMD normally is the maximum performance state. In which case, I can't actually run 2 gigahertz because it doesn't go to 2 gigahertz. Garbage. Useless garbage. No, oh, and you also can't type in there. But for some reason, I can set much higher clock on this. I don't get it. Who? Who? What? Why? Why can't they? Ugh. Yeah, this is idle. This has to be idle clock. Well, I mean... I'm not about to start hacking NVIDIA BIOSes just because they can't, like, this is a thing. Um, great. So, I'll probably max out the GPU core clock. Ooh, the, mem oh, the memory is still underclocked, so that's good. Apply. What? Unhandled exception. Okay. That's dumb. So now the OC utility is crashing too. It's lovely. Well, that worked a lot better than I expected. Let's max the slider and call it a day. <laughs> um, I mean, we do seem to be having some issues. So we'll give it more vCore. That'll hopefully... Yeah, that seems to be cleaning it up, kinda. Apply. It's like on fire and stuff, but that's cool. I'm gonna drop the temperature lower. That might fix it. CPU's getting warm again. Um... Oh! It's fixed! Kinda. Yeah. So, minus 50. Um... The slider doesn't go any higher. This is so not fair! Seriously, the slider doesn't go any higher. I want my 2 gigahertz. Useless trash software. Also, I bet it's not actually maxed out. It's like, yeah. It's not even proper. It's 7 megahertz under the max boost state. Ugh. Does this even have boost? This probably doesn't... No, this doesn't have boost. Useless trash GPU. I wonder if I can get it to clock to idle. Okay, so close 3D mark. Did I save this? Yeah, I saved that. Close 3D mark. Okay. So now we're at 900 megahertz. So I think... Well, unhandled... What do you... Continue. Show overclocking. Continue. Continue. Make it work, useless. Okay, this is just, everything's on fire. <laughs> it's like, the software itself is imploding. Um, well, I'm just gonna enable K-Boost again, pull the GPU down even lower. Give the CPU a last shot. We'll see if this can even pass Ice Storm. If it can, cool, but it's probably gonna score like trash because of the massive memory underclaw. Ugh. I kind of want to try see if the memory can come back. Just like try recover it. Where is? Yeah, still here. Zero. Still here. Cool. I'm running out of LN2, so I need to refill. GPU is at minus 70 according to the wrong thermometer. Software says it's at minus 56. I'm inclined to believe the software. That's probably closer to reality. Yeah. Okay, trash. Let's see if we can run this. I mean, at this point, I, I literally can't overclock any higher than the slider stopped. This is ridiculous. This is really dumb. Okay. 
Um, right, we need to get that resolution running. Actually, you know what? It's just I, I just want to try. And it's not blowing up yet. What? No, I can't hex edit NVIDIA software. It only works on AMD. I, I don't know what it'll do in... Uh... Actually, I might try Afterburner. Uh, yeah, I'll try Afterburner. That might work. Um, so we need to create a new resolution because, of course, um, the idiotic pile of garbage that is the NVIDIA resolution stuff doesn't work. Let's see, 230. And I'll just lower the pixel count a bit more. <laughs> Try to get even lower res because it'll score higher. Useless, like, that is just such a dumb tweak in my opinion, though. 300. I wish... I wish there was, like, an LN2 pot which had, like, a... LN2 input tube, like separate from the main hall because, did it just crash? Oh no, that timed out, cool. Test. Blech. Less pixels than a Game Boy. <laughs> Actually no, a Game Boy's probably lower. Ice Storm at so low res a console could actually run it. There we go. Actually, Ice Storm is like for iPhones and stuff, so. It's what the test is designed designed to bench. Um, but still, let's see. Custom, yeah. But first, we need to open 3D Mark so we can make sure that we can actually get to our benchmark. This is gonna be awful. This is gonna be so bad. Benchmarks, ice storm, crush it like so. Apply. Yes. Minimize and let's, let's go for it. Can't get any worse. <laughs> also, my Catzilla score is really low for some random reason. So that is going to be good. Will Vega use Samsung memory? It should probably be Hynix. Uh, because HBM. It crashed. It actually crashed. No. Yeah, it crashed. At least the driver recovered. That's nice. So, I'm thinking 1.8 volts. Who's with me? I'm with me. Damn, this is... Yeah, I need logarithmics. This is ridiculous. 1.79, that should do it. Um, I wonder if the clock's reset. At this point, I don't really have a good way to check. <laughs> um, let's see, can we get GPU Z open? No, actually, I, that won't tell me, will it? GPU. This is, oh god. Sensors. Oh no, we're, we're still at max clock, so we can still just go 3D Mark. More tests. Ice Storm. Because I, I just tweaked the voltage. Hopefully, more V core is more better. Run. I'll try to drop the temperature even lower. We are at minus 79 according to the temperature uh, thermometer that reads too low. I think it just crashed, didn't it? Yeah, it just crashed. I think it crashed completely though. And now it'll boot loop. Yay! Oh no, monitor is back. Okay. Been blocked. Wait, what? I can't read that! <laughs> um. This is so bad. I don't want to lower the clocks. I mean, we can actually still open... Uh, what's it called? Uh, precision. 
bam, precision. Optimized for ultra... Wait, K-Boost is disabled? Why, why, why are we at 900? Useless pile of garbage. Fly. There, now we're at 1855. Okay, so we'll try 1855. Slightly lower, just because I don't want to... Well, I actually would like to finish at these, in, you know, relatively high clocks. There we go. CPU temperature back under control. Run, garbage! Run! I believe in you not. And it crashed. Of course it did. <sighs> Question is, will the driver recover, or will it throw the whole system in a boot loop? Ah, well, looks like the driver recovered. Great. Um, application has been blocked from accessing graphics hardware. Okay, that's fine. That just tells us it crashed. Um, where is precision? Precision, get your ass on the screen. Okay, drop the clock again. You know what, I think we might be too high voltage. I know that sounds like heresy, but it's possible. I want to be able to hit the apply button and still see 1750, 900. Apply. Okay, let's go for 1800, 1 1.76 volts. We are on K-Boost. So for those of you unaware, K-Boost in uh, the Precision it, um, Mac, uh, keeps your GPU clock constant on everything except the 10 series, I think. Let's run. Oh, look, it's... No, it crashed again. No, it didn't crash. It's just losing display output, which is cool. It's like, that's normal. <laughs> Come back. Please. Yeah, I think it crashed. So, funny thing is, monitor is acting like there's a signal coming. But I can't... Ooh! It's still working! Okay, so yeah. The display driver on the GPU is giving up at this point, which is cool. Cool with that. AMD cards do that too. All, everything does that. Display drive dropping out. It's no, nothing... It's nothing new. Um, it is concerning, but you just gotta sit there and pray that it's working. Because <laughs> you can't see anything. Uh, there is a vault mod you can do to fix this. I haven't done it. Um, can't be bothered. It's not even pulling, like, an amp from the wall. <laughs> oh, I think it crashed. Our core voltage has gone up. It probably crashed. Or we're in the physics test. Or it crashed. One of the two. Probably crashed. Crash it. Damn it, useless pile of garbage. I should have... See, you know... I need more buttons so that I'd have a reset button. Instead of just white BIOS and power. Like I have now. Yeah, I think it's dead. Cut power. That's interesting, though. Thought it'd be worse, like it wouldn't work at all at minus 70, but it's, it's dodgy, but workable. Oh, yay, uh, damn. <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, I have no idea 
what I'm looking at. Okay. We made it! <laughs> I'm into the right OS. It's not a 120 by 120, so this is the correct OS. Ugh, you know what? Um, so evidently, uh, Ice Storm is being extremely pleasant, extremely cooperative. So instead, we're gonna do some uh, Catzilla, because I also need to do that benchmark. Where are my advanced displays? Where did that go? Come back! I need you! Uh, display settings? Um, where, where? Oh, they're... Where did they go? Seriously, that was terrifying. I was worried I'd be stuck, like I'd have to throw the OS out again. Customize your display settings. Okay. So, I think Catzilla has the same weird resolution thing, just because it's NVIDIA, but... Um, on Catzilla, at least, it shouldn't be legal to do that. So we can run it at normal, full 1080p, and enjoy the incredible slideshow in full HD. So that's exactly what we're gonna end up with. Because this is Catzilla. Catzilla is a heavy bench, relatively heavy benchmark, and the GT730 is a really terrible graphics card. So those go hand in hand. Okay, so we're at mine. Eh, too much voltage. I'm gonna run it on less voltage just because that should stop. Like that shouldn't cause the constant display corruption. That should go away. Um, well, the display dropping out should stop happening so much. Let's see if I can run higher memory. 200. It still won't do, like, I, I can't just set 470, even though I'd love to. Okay, let's run at this. What? Oh, people are like, oh, no, it wasn't running. Ice Storm wasn't running, because my, my uh, GPU voltage was way up. Which, if it was still running, the voltage would have been down. <sighs> Wait, you saw it. Wait, you mean like the capture card didn't pass it on to me? Oh! I hate my life. <laughs> Look, guys, I get it. I'll run Ice Storm again. It's no, no big deal. We got LN2 for days. I got a refill this Monday. So. There's no shortage of cold juice. But there is a shortage of patience. <laughs> I've had it. I've had it with this card. This is actually running decently well. I'm impressed. I mean, it's not a complete slideshow like it was there. Well, there, there we go. <laughs> Jinxed it. So what you're all seeing right now is a benchmark called Catzilla, and I have the LOD set super high, so basically everything, all the textures are blurred to hell. Even the particle effects are effectively squares because it averages them. Yeah, my, uh, McCulty, what, what he just said on the chat, that's exactly what LOD is. Um...
You know, the funny thing is, this score right here is so bad. Like, there's the, the top score for Catzilla is like 6k, and I can barely break 3000. Because I am so good at overclocking NVIDIA stuff. CPU is running way, like, really warm, running it below minus, well, above minus 90. Think this gray screen is fine? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, all the high scores like that are better than me. It's just ridiculous software hacks that I'm not aware of because I haven't, I don't do Nvidia cards. I don't, like, I believe you guys that, like, I killed it prematurely. It's just, oh, man, that score sucks. Yeah. This is, this is, like, I, you know, it's like Ice Storm is one thing, but when your Catzilla is this low. No, because we need to save the results for this. Um, all right. Well, you're not allowed to see that, so let me quickly just do this while I activate Catzilla. Where did my keys go? All right, it's in the benchmarks folder. Save results. There we go. Um, it's PC. There we go. That's saved. Now the CPU Z thing. This is such a bad Catzilla score for the clocks I'm running. Like, it is really, really bad. This is atrocious. The only o part of overclocking I'm good at is the clocks part. The score part is just like, that's disaster. Um, full screen. Zilla, save. There we go. So I'm not going to rerun that because that's just completely trash compared to 3D Mark. And 3D Mark is at least kind of entertaining with the whole fighting the resolution and all that, even if it's dumb. And I need more LN2 again.
go. How's the CPU doing? Minus 80. Cool. GPU is minus 60. There, okay, precision, 900, I have a window open, so, yeah, that, that's what I do for the whole too much LN2 thing. No, it's not often, I always have the window open. And really, liquid nitrogen isn't as risky as, like, say, dry ice. Because you can function in, like, 6% oxygen atmosphere. You can still pretty much function. You won't feel great, but you'll work. Um, whereas if you have slightly too much CO2 in your environment, you'll pass out. So, liquid nit like, if you're working dry ice, then it's really, really important to make sure your ventilation's great. But if you're working LN2, it's not, like, super... It's not super risky. Um, usually all the big like LN2 accidents you hear about is like idiots pouring it into a pool. Because then it, like the liquid, ni the, the nitrogen when it boils, it's cold and it stays at ground level because it's heavier than air, just due to the temperature difference. And since it stays at ground level and you're like in a pool or something, uh, everybody in the pool chokes. Because you know, somebody was an idiot, um, but yeah. If you know what you're doing with it, like if you, if I were to lie down on the floor right now, that'd be a pretty dumb idea. But <laughs> it's not like, you know, the ventilation for this is a huge issue. So that's precision set up. 3D mark and time to fight the NVIDIA control panel. To set extra low resolutions. Like never before. <laughs> um... I kind of want to try more memory clock. Uh, okay, so let's go customize. Um, create custom resolution. Uh, 230 by 320. 75. Yes, please. CPU's getting warm again. The atmosphere is like 70% uh, nitrogen. 32% 16-bit depth. They don't have a 16-bit setting. Um, okay. Ta-da. Okay, let's pull this down to minus 60. Right now the GPU is minus 59. I'd like it at minus 65, 92 on that. And I guess I'll have to watch the capture card output because apparently the monitor is slower. What? Oh, somebody's asking. Yeah, I know the atmosphere is 80% nitrogen, but if there's an abnormal amount... So, no, what, with liquid nitrogen, what will happen is you'll start... As it boils off, you'll start piling up nitrogen at sort of ground floor. And you'll get more and more. Uh... The song, like, the music I'm listening to in the background of all the streams is Tyrant of Death, which is a one-man cyber metal project, um, and he has a blog, you can download all of his music there for free. He also has a band camp, so, you know, if you'd like to support him, you can go there. And he has a YouTube channel where you can get a lot of the things that aren't, like, where you can listen to a lot of the stuff he works on.
Is liquid nitrogen expensive? I pay a pound for a liter delivered to my door. So, yeah. Oh, this song, it's from the, let me look it up, because this is on Play by Random. It's from the forthcoming album, Dislocated. And the score will suck! Yeah. It's actually worse than any of my previous scores. What's what? 99% sure the physics score is the problem. Actually, no, this, this is terrible. That's really bad. The physics score isn't, well, that's not great, but it's not a catastrophe. I guess I'll have to restart to make it work properly. Oh, you couldn't see the physics score? It was 77,000. Uh, I store, I have 65, I have two, I have a 30 liter DWAR and a 35 liter. Um, and I typically store, well, I store 65 liters and it takes a while for it to boil off. Like it really takes a while. If you have good DWARs, it really depends on like, uh, if your DWAR is new or if it's old and leaky. 1750? No, we're not running 1750. We're running 18, 1800. I said 1800, garbage. There. Apply. Wonder, you know what? I'm gonna risk it. Minimize, 3D mark. Uh, no, K-Boost, the thing about K-Boost is without K-Boost, this is gonna run at like, it's not gonna run full speed in 3D mark. Oh right, 3D mark doesn't open unless you have the resolution set to normal. Forgot about that. Let's see, how, how's the NVIDIA control, how intelligent is the, ah oh, well, now nope, can't use it, okay. Advance settings. Three D mark. Oh, it opened. Get your ass over here. Okay. Uh all right, so now we need to do the whole NVIDIA driver thing. God, I hate this. What? Unhandled exception. Quit it. Everything is crashing. Everything is on fire. Then the operating system wants to die at this point on its own. What? Nah. Yeah. Is that at 75, damn it. Otherwise it runs slow. 75. Uh, right now the CPU is at 5.7 gigahertz. Now I don't want to run Fire Strike. That that'd be dumb. <laughs> that would crash instantly. Um, well, probably. But anyway, where is my useless Nvidia driver? Where is my custom resolution? Of course, nowhere. That's where.
Why isn't it available? I've done the same thing, like, I've been doing the same thing the entire day. Why is it now not available? I hate this driver. I really, really hate this driver. So bad. Actually, no, I'll have to make another new resolution at this rate. Delete that, delete that. Alright, did that maybe fix it? Nope, <laughs> still not available. Okay. Um, great, new custom resolution. 230, 350, 75, test. Oh, there we go. Now it's up. Apply. CPU is really warm again. Go. Wait, do we have a precision? We're at eighteen hundred, good. Ice storm. Yeah, I know, I tr tried the color depth thing, it, it's not available. Like, the option is there, but there's no actual settings in it. it it's just 32-bit, it doesn't go below that. It'd be really nice if I could run my, you like, if I could run the full memory clock on this GPU, that'd be awesome. Then it would actually score decently. But right now I'm not even outscoring people on air cooling. <laughs> which is pathetic. But it's a software issue, so I, I don't really care at this point. It's just like... Like, Lucky Noob is scoring 192,000 points in the graphics test at 1300 core clock and 1400 memory clock on his GT730. And here I am at 1800, and I bet it will see, like, maybe 130,000 if we're lucky. Because praise my software. I'm not making any progress <laughs> at all. This is awful. This is like, eh, move, you fat pile of garbage. There. That's your. That's the physics score. That's the graphics score. This hasn't even gone up. The other interesting thing is my, my second graphics score is really, really high compared to my first one. Whereas everybody else on the ranking has them reversed. Their GT1 is higher than GT2. Or just, just like, I don't know, my Windows is possessed or something. There, like, every install of Windows I have does this. They all score like this, and they all score like trash. And depending on how much stuff I throw at them, they score slightly, like, the more work I do on them, they score slightly less trash, but it still isn't anywhere near anybody else on the ranking, so. Clock for clock, I'm the slowest. And I have no idea why. I don't think this is even worth saving. I don't think this is actually, well, nah, this is all probably better than my last score because that one was also 110k, but overall, but yeah, this is just 
This is so garbage. Wait, now all the resolutions are here? What? How did that happen? I guess I could go for 6 gigahertz on the CPU, but considering how little that has worked so far... Please don't crash. Thanks. Thank you. At least you did that. <laughs> this is so bad. Like, I don't have any idea what's wrong with the OS. I don't work with enough NVIDIA cards enough to know, so... GPU was getting a bit warm. Okay, so let's take the screen. Well, actually, I just want to check if the other score was better, which it probably was. Uh, Ice Storm 6. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's, what, that's what you call progress. 300 points. 300 points progress. Incredible. Really, really paid off. Dropping the GPU by who knows how much and running 200, like, I think that was, the other score was at like 1600 or something, I think. Truly, I am a NVIDIA overclocking master and I'm never touching one of these things again. <laughs> at least the GTX 1070 is 3D Mark Time Spy and as far as I'm aware, there's no huge weird stuff with Time Spy. I hope. I really hope. <laughs> uh, summer Spec 3D. 7. Save. Uh, how much voltage will you push on the 1070? So the thing about 10 series Pascal is there's voltage, like on LN2, above a certain voltage, the cards stop working uh, completely or something like that. I'm not sure. They're, they're weird on LN2. So they're really like, the best 1070 on LN2 ever is 2.3 gigahertz for time spy. So I don't expect, like, I think I'll probably get stuck at like 1.35 volts or something, maybe 1.4. Um, well, the GPU won't do 2 gigahertz because the slide <laughs> doesn't go high enough. It won't score well because Windows sucks. Um, I have a Catzilla score. I have a 3D Mark score. They're both both terrible. Um, any ideas on what I should do with this? Because quite frankly, I'm annoyed and bored and clueless as to what I'm supposed to do about this. Oh, uh, the 2.9 gigahertz 1060 Hall of Fame edition. Uh, Galax spent like a huge amount of time trying to figure out what on earth it is with Pascal that breaks it on LN2. So they sort of fixed that on the 1060 and also that 2.9 gigahertz 1060 is only in GPU Pi. And GPU Pi is a compute benchmark that runs about 200 to 300 megahertz faster than every other benchmark you can think of. And then there's like, you can also idle the GPU at like 3 gigahertz. That's really, really easy. You just open up the GPU Z render test and like, that, that's how Kingpin, uh, Kingpin posted a 1080 Ti running 3 gigahertz. That's how he did it. He was just idling a desktop, essentially. If you don't put enough load on the graphics card, you can get some really, really high clocks. But it's the same as like 8 gigahertz FX uh, CPUs. Um, basically, you do it by not running anything. If, it doesn't, if it's not running anything, it can do 8 gigahertz. Incredible. Um, though to be fair, doing 8 gigahertz is hard, and same for the 3, three gigahertz thing, it's just you can't actually use a 3 gigahertz Pascal card, because it won't run anything. It's, it's just, it just looks good. <laughs> um, 
But then again, it's like you're not going to play games on this either, so, you know, practicality is sort of out the window for overclocking. Uh, I don't know what to do about this. This is going to keep scoring like garbage because the win like my Windows install is trash. So, I don't know. I, I want to see if we can't get 300 megahertz me plus 300 memory. Maybe the memory fixed itself. Oh, no. No, it didn't. <laughs> it's dead. Yeah. Is dead. So, uh... How does that two volts to the GPU sound to everybody? <laughs> oh, wait. It reset. Made it. Incredible. I don't know, like, at this point, I, I like, I, I can't be bothered. It's not gonna, s like, I can keep pounding away at it, and it's probably gonna score maybe another 500 points higher. But I'm still gonna lose the, like, I'm still gonna only go for the lucky prize draw in the competition. So, you know. Yeah, that, that's a thing. So I'm just going to make sure that the GPU is not super hot. Um, where's my flash stick with all the scores? Oh, I actually moved that already. So I'll upload the scores, make sure everything is good, and then we'll kill the damn thing because the damn thing sucks. Uh, and then we'll make it into a keychain or we'll actually wall ornament, which I can then do keychain. Whoa, that's a lot of Twitch follows. <laughs> Somebody's burning something outside. It, it's definitely not from here, because it smells like wood smoke, not electrical, you know, not like burning cable or burning electronics. Okay. Um, great. Upload my trash scores. Like, I don't even need to upload my GT7, like my, my new 3D Mark score, because it still sucks. And my other one is, sucks just as much. <laughs> this is, ugh. Why am I so bad at this? Okay, let, let's take a photo of the... There we go. That's one. I'd be surprised if the card doesn't instantly die. That, that would be impressive in my opinion. Yeah, okay, I can't actually get a photo. I wanted a picture of, like, the power board sticking out of the card, but... It's not gonna really work that well. Eh, this kinda works. Ugh. Kinda. How blurry is it? Not bad. Yeah, that'll work. So, uh, two volts. Two volts to the card. I actually wonder where, where the, the power board maxes out, because I've never actually... Like, I've tested it unloaded, but unloaded doesn't really count. So let's pull the card down. So I just overpour massively. But that's cool. Because what I want to do is find out where that thing... I want to pull the CPU down. It was getting a bit warm, and it is still at 1.75 volts, so... Letting it get hot isn't great for its lifespan, and I don't, I do want to keep the i3. <laughs> GPU I don't really care about, so 3D Mark. I just want to have something running on it while we do it, just to, just to not make it completely empty. So one thing I've, for some reason the GPU load indicator seems to be completely broken on this card. Actually, you know what? Let's just run the render test. Let's just have it like that, so that we can see that it is working. It just froze. Oh, there. All right, you can pause it by clicking on it. What? Okay, so closing precision breaks GPU Z. That's that's interesting. Um, there we go. So that's running now. CPU is happy. GPU is about to not be happy. Who cares? So 1.75, 5. 1. 
eight. Can't really tell anything's changing. I'll actually lower you so you can see the multimeter better. There we go. Yep, one point eight. Let's see, do I have a box? Of course I have a box. There. Can you read that? I can read that. You should probably be able to read that. Cool. So we're at 1.8 now. Card is at minus 70. Did it die? Seriously? I was hoping to get at least two volts out of this. Come on! Can't be that weak. Let's see. Might just be that it black screens if you give it too much voltage. That's possible, like, gra Yeah. Just black screens if you give it too much voltage. It won't even let me kill it. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, let's try that again. Start render test. Actually, you know what? I could blow this up even further. So right now we're at 1.625. Up to go. Eight five. Ah, uh, yeah. D display just drops out. That sucks. Yeah, it, the display drive circuit gives up before the core. So, this is going to be even more uneventful than when I killed the Sempron, essentially, if, if I were to do it. Well, I mean, it's refusing to die by blacking out. I mean, I could go crank it up all the way to one, two volts. It'll kill it, and then we'll not be able to boot it up. That's all that'll change. Like, I can't... Can't really kill it properly, so to speak. You know, it won't run until it's death. It'll black out, and then I can keep going up. Eventually, it'll die, and then the, the, the only way you'll know it died is because it won't boot up again. Um... Somebody save the card. I don't... This card is too annoying. It's like, I don't even want to use it ever again. It's just so painful. Kids in Africa could eat this graphics card. <laughs> That's like the only... I mean... Custom mods, uh, yeah, no, here's the thing, I want the 480 power board still. Even if it's running wrong, I want it. I want the VR, like, I want to keep the 480 VRM, it's just... Uh, does it have a cold bug? I don't know, we, we could try that. It's at minus 60 right now, we'll, I'll just empty this into it. Oh. So there we go. Put the other meter on there, so that's showing... Wait. Oh. Man, there's too many wires here. Way too many wires. I wonder how the... I really wonder how, how they cable manage, like, the professional setups with, like, four-way. Like, how do you cable manage that? Can anybody see that? No, of course not. Anybody see that now? Yeah, 757-something... Problem is, my shirt is white, so it reflects in it, so... There. That is not really that legible, I'm sorry. It's just not gonna... There? That's worse. That's... Ugh. Make... 
Get it? Ah, uh, that's kind of legible. So let's douse it. Dropping, dropping, dropping. I don't think I put enough LN2 in there. The LN2 pod is really heavy because it's meant for like GTX 580s and 980Ti's and really power hungry GPUs, not this. There we go. So it's not super fast to change temperature, so we're at minus 77. Give it another one. Whoops, way overfilled it. Eighty five, still working. Wait, is the voltage climbing up or? Ninety-five, ninety. Still working. I'm impressed. Wait, can we actually run anything at this temperature? I'll just run Fire Strike, a proper manly benchmark, not stupid ass Ice Storm. Ugh. Actually, nine hundred. Why? Volts. Volts. Like 1.7. There we go. 200 mem. 200 mem works. 3D Mark is broken. Great. Uh, 3D Mark. Okay, 3D Mark is refusing to function at this point. No idea why. Will Catzilla work? Well, Catzilla might work, so we'll just do Catzilla instead. It'll probably black out. Oh no, it's working. System service exception. Uh, I don't actually think that's the GPU. That's probably the RAM, but... Yeah, damn it to hell. So... Oh, wait. CPU's way too warm. It's a 57. CPU's at 57 degrees. That's why. That's why Catzilla crashed. was messing around with the graphics card and almost cooked the i3. Um, If it at least scored well, it's just like, it's just not fair. I'm always going to score really low. I'd have to be like 3 gigahertz core clock and 4 gigahertz memory before I even caught up to anybody. Uh, if I wasn't streaming, I, well, before I started the stream, I was listening to Ministry, the industrial band. Um, other than that, I also improper shut down. Nope. Run all benchmark. Wait, where? How is the CPU doing? The CPU is at minus 80. Let's get precision. I want everything running well.
There we go, that's the last shot of LN2 I have for today. I don't want to waste any more on this. 9.50, let's go all in. Apply. Bam. Run. Uh, AIO cooler on an RX 480? Yeah, that's a pretty good idea. Um, RX 480s pick up quite a lot from lower temperature. As well, E daily maximum 1.35 volts. And you'll have a hell of a time trying to cool that. Whoa, Cadzilla's running good. I mean, the score is still, like, the FPS sucks, but there's no artifacts. Nice and clean. You, you could play games on this. <laughs> oh, God. Temperature is steadily climbing. Voltage is at... Voltage is drooped to hell. Alright, can I tilt this? Make it visible? Kinda. Nah, you can't get the angle right. Like that. It's not a problem in real life. Like, it's not badly legible in real life, the LCD is. It's just, on, on screen, it just doesn't show up on cameras. No idea why. There. Um. Yeah, the GT730 is still alive, mostly because I'm extremely merciful. Not because it's a good card. <laughs> I can't can't quite find it in me to kill it for su for su well me sucking and well it is kind of, well yeah it is my fault. The the whole Windows is scoring like garbage. Yeah, that's entirely my fault. So can't really blame the card for that. But you know, on another hand, if the card didn't have all these weird software issues then, you know, I wouldn't be having problems. <laughs> so, <laughs> depends on how you look at it. Uh, the RX 480 GTR will have a fruitful future as the VRM of the, well, whatever it is that I come across that next needs a VRM. Uh, I've never run, I've never properly run dry ice. I do plan to uh, run... Dry ice, like I do want to do like a proper dry ice session one day, but I've never done one so far. And the main reason is dry ice is like really expensive for me compared to LN2. Like I pay, I pay like a pound a liter for LN2, whereas for dry ice I pay like two pounds a kilo or something. Like it's really really bad in terms of cost. For, for it's like yeah, it's like two or three pounds a kilo for dry ice, which is just terrible if you compare it. Like LN2 is just straight up better in every way, shape, and form. So. Yeah. Uh, will there be a cheap as chips competition? I told the guys from Hardware Bot that I really, really want one. Except this one, this time, I would like one that isn't on NVIDIA cards. Because NVIDIA cards suck. <laughs> Because I remember the GT710 was the same thing. It just scored like trash. It actually outscores this GT730, which I don't get. And uh, the capture card is having issues. I'm sorry about that. I can't really do anything about it. I'm worried the benchmark will crash itself. Uh, tips for first time LN2. Don't over... Do it on AM3. First time ever LN2 overclocking, do it on AM3+. plus. Because the motherboards are cheap, the CPUs are cheap, there's no cold bug, um, it's really, really easy to work on it. What? Watch the CPU temperature, it's at 60. I'm going to take, I mean this score is better than the last one, so I'm still going to save it, but it's not worth it. It's so bad! I'm literally scoring like half of what the first place guy is, and I'm not that far off in, uh, in clocks. It's depressing. I don't like benchmarks that scale with like that that need a ton of software tweaks. There. Ugh. 
This is why I don't ever properly run SuperPy32 million. I only use it as like a memory test. Because it's like it, running SuperPy32 million properly is like you actually have to use Windows XP, and then you need to do Copy Waza, which I know what Copy Waza is. I don't know. I've never done it. <laughs> I have no idea how. So that was great. Um, not a fan of the software heavy stuff. Wait, what do I need? CPU Z, GPU Z. Um, wait, new GT GTX 1030. Why on earth would I want to use another Nvidia card after I just had it? So like, you do realize I've been like, and complaining about having to use a GT 730 this entire stream. Why on earth would I go and get a 10 series, thir uh, Nvidia? It's like, the only reason why I'm using the GTX 1070 on liquid nitrogen is because I don't, like, getting an Asus Fury is just, like, I would have actually gotten an Asus Fury if that was an option, except it's not. So, fi like, finding Fury Xs these days is a nightmare. So. I'd rather run a Fury on LN2 than work on any NVIDIA card. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, let's save this. Do I? Oh right, mem main board, full screen. Um, oh wait, no flash stick. Go to 2.1 volts. You know what? Yeah, I'll I'll bump it to 2.1. We'll just crank it up, drop it down, see if it still boots. Let's bump it into... What? On LN2, Fury X's can do 1300 plus core clock. And the HBM goes like a rocket. Like you can run like 2 gigahertz HBM clock on liquid nitrogen. I mean, 1 gigahertz. 2 gigahertz effective, 1 gigahertz actual. Like in Sapphire Tricks, instead of a 500, you're going to be at like a gigahertz. Which is really nice. Um, the performance is still not that great, but, eh. Like, it won't catch a 980 Ti, um, but I'd rather work on it than anything NVIDIA. Because I hate NVIDIA so much. <laughs> okay, so we're at 1.68. Okay, so here's the voltage. There. Okay. And, oh wait, my hand's in the way. That's 1.9. Yeah, okay, so it actually resets if you push the voltage too far on it. Okay, um, let's see if it still fires up. So that's a little issue with the VRM. There's a protection circuit in there, and I think I, uh, it trips when you max out the thingy. This resistor isn't big enough. There's a little resistor on that, and that's not... Whoa, it survived that. Holy sh... Damn. I thought I killed it. I seriously thought that would have killed it. Oh, well, I guess... I guess since the safety kicked in so quickly, it, it didn't really have to suffer very long. So, let's go again. So we're at 1.13 volts. There, we're at two volts now. That's a two. Let's see. I think, yeah, okay, so we can do up to 2.2. That's 2.2 before it shuts down. 
So yeah, it shuts down at like 2.3. Um, I don't, I, let's see if this fires up still. At this point, I think it's dead. Like properly, properly dead, dead. Yeah. I have a high core volt. Eh? Why? Made it? No way. Nope, didn't make it. So that's the end of a GT730. Um, minus 72 degrees and 2.2 volts later, it's dead. Well, actually, it's probably around like minus 55 or something. Oh, all right. Yeah, it's dead. Should be pretty dead unless the CPU is complaining. Wait, I'll reset the BIOS. And it should still be dead after that. I think this is the time to say, I popped it. <laughs> there wasn't really that, like, it's really anticlimactic when you put too much voltage through th something. Well, that's that's the end of my uh, GT730 overclocking uh, career. Thank God for that. Never want to see this card again. So, yeah. Awful pile of garbage. So now I can pull the VRM back off of it. And, ouch, that's the fan. Let's shut that down. Just tear this down. Give you a look around the system since it did just finish. I think holding it at that 2.2 volts is what did it. Okay, there we go. Yeah, the RX 480 VRM isn't even warm. So that, that works great for, like, low power stuff. Thing is, it's really running wrong. Like, it shouldn't be dropping 15 millivolts under full load. And I think that's because the current sense on that is completely busted. Because I had a dumb idea, and that's pretty much how the current sense got broken. So, yeah, um... Let's see. Getting this out is going to be a pain. Oh, that always happens. Okay. Oh, oh man, that's cold. Ta-da! There it is. The atrocity. Right there. That's the GT730. So we actually had water climbing up the wires. There's a bit of ice on these. But it never actually got to the 480 power board, which is nice. Um, because that basically means I didn't need to do insulation on that. Oh, whoops. Yeah. Frosted over pretty heavy. So, yeah. Memory chips, yeah, those were cold. Not, fro not iced, so that's interesting. I would have thought they would have been iced with how many issues they were having, but yeah, so that's one dead card. I'm going to pull the RX 480 VRM off again and use that on something else in the future. Really, I should call the RX 480 VRM the GPU Slayer <laughs> because it goes up to 2.2 volts. I don't think there's a power board out there that goes that high. Like the e-power, as far as I'm aware, only goes to like, I think it goes to like 2 volts, just only 2 volts, whereas that goes to 2.2 because of the way I modded it. And actually it still trips its over, over voltage protection, so I still need to fix that. Um, to not, you know, break if you push it too far. There, so that's it. Save the very nice memory. <laughs> the only really the CPU and the RAM is really the only parts of the system here I care about. Everything else is just eh. Well, the motherboard technically costs about the same as the CPU, but it's, I don't actually know what to do with the motherboard. I'm th it'll go on the junkyard. It, it still works. I can pull off the capacitors if they won't fit in your case or something. Because that's the thing, is like, 
The MOBO has cap capacitors for the V-Core, which actually helps with overclocking. It drops the maximum, like, the voltage you need by, like, 20 millivolts uh, when you're running, like, 5 gigahertz and up on a 7700K. The thing is, uh, the capacitors I used are massive, and they stick out from the bottom of the motherboard, which is fine on the t open bench table here, because, like, you have a huge amount of clearance under the MOBO, but on, like, normal cases, it's not probably not going to fit. So, yeah, that's a thing. Oh. Just gonna move this to the kitchen. There we go. Yeah, so another thing I've recently changed is I used to use, like, Neopre, uh, what's it called, Armaflex for my base layer of installation. I've completely dropped that. Blue Shop Towel works just fine. Um, I even did my 8 gigahertz attempt on the FX with just Blue Shop Towel, but there it was really dodgy because the outer edge of the motherboard was actually smoking because the cold went through the socket to the edge of the board and it was just freezing off the edge, so... Yeah, <laughs> there it was kind of, kind of borderline, but it's still not. Yeah, ice is fine. It's water you have to worry about. So, yeah, let's pull this out. Is this All right? That's still hooked up to that. Oh, yeah. So there's the capacitors over there and they do stick out quite a bit so they won't even work with some back plates that don't you know look like that so yeah this this board will go on the junkyard i can't think of anything i want to do with a z270 mobo unless gigabyte has another occ like another series of uh overclocking set uh more overclocking competitions scheduled for the this year um i don't want to run this board Otherwise, because it's just terrible. <laughs> it's not really its fault, considering it's an ITX board, not meant for LM2, but... Eh. Doesn't change that it's terrible for LM2. <laughs> okay, so... That sucked. I don't, I don't feel anything about that GT730 at all. Like, really don't feel anything. Like, we're... With the RX 480 GTR, I was all like, I was on the verge of crying over that. This is just a case of thank God it's dead. <laughs> uh, do CP775 seven, seven, uh, CPUs have cold bugs? I have no idea. I've never worked 775. Um, so, yeah. Um, 4790K, 1.25 volts, 4.8 gigahertz. That's nice. That's a really nice uh, 4.8, like 4.8, one, my 4790K is 4.8, 1.35 volts. Uh, the lossy, Buildzoid, uh, you know photon induction? Of course I know photon induction. Like that, that's where I, like I wanted to do a, like a full on impression of the whole, I popped it, but couldn't quite pull it off in, in the moment. I wasn't sure if it, like doing that reference would work out or not. To, Get more confidence. Am I out of energy drinks? Right, I am. And there's still a little bit. Yeah, there's nothing in there. Damn it. Where's the water? So, where can I send you? I don't want to work on 775. Like, I really don't care. Wait, my RAM is XMP19. What what on earth does that mean? What, no OC fluid for the Buildzoid hair? It doesn't need fluid. Just need to crush it a bit and it'll naturally kinda hold. It's 
So, yeah. Oh, 1866. Okay, that's cool. Um, all right, scores. Submission time. I don't even know why, why, why I bother with posting these scores. They suck. <laughs> so bad. I don't know what it is about me and NVIDIA graphics cards. It's like every single time, it's always the same issue. It scores terrible. Um, and the GT710, if I remember correctly, just randomly started sc scoring better. But randomly started scoring better is basically a case of I don't know how to make it work again. So that doesn't help me. Wait, no, that's the wrong thing. There. Um. If you're getting Memtest uh, address errors, RAM overclocking has so many settings that there's like no one answer I can really give you for that. You're just going to have to try, raise, lower the, like, tr raise the timings, more voltage, um, there, there's a bunch of t stuff you can try, but, yeah. Yeah. Um... Uh, the message signal interrupts. That stuff. Oh. Eh. It's so weird. It's like, I, like, I asked everybody I know about, like, yo, my, my system scores like trash. And they're just like, oh, try different windows. I've tried three different windows installs. Oh, try different drivers. I've tried dr different drivers. It still scores like trash. It's like, I don't know. I'm cursed or something. So, yeah, XFX used to do NVIDIA cards, and then they decided to do, like, one or two, like, they did, XFX basically was, like, doing, they did NVIDIA cards, then they started doing ATI cards, and NVIDIA told them, okay, you're not getting any more chips, deal with it. And that's how XFX became an AMD, uh, ATI AMD company. So, yeah. EVGA will never ever make anything AMD because NVIDIA would probably just stop giving them GPUs. Like, EVGA gets a lot of preferential treatment from NVIDIA right now, and they're just going to tell them to go to hell if the, uh, EVGA ever tries to work with AMD. Um, and that's ignoring the fact that EVGA themselves have said that they've never even talked to AMD about anything. Like, they, they practically ignore their existence, so... Yeah. Uh, unlocking the voltage on NVIDIA Pascal cards. Uh, you either have to rely on one of the extreme BIOSes from Asus, or you have to do physical mods to the cards, which I will be doing next week on the GTX 1070. Um, wait, why do you? Why would you enter a serial number to download drivers for XFX? Just download generic AMD drivers. GTX 650V mod. Depends on the GTX 650. Um, why would you want an EVGA cooler on a 290? Look for like a Sapphire... If you have a reference 290, look for the... Try to find a Sapphire Tri-X cooler on eBay. That thing... That fits the reference cards and it's like the best 290 cooler ever. So... Yeah. Well...
so. Uh, when you're overclocking, how important is the ripple voltage from your power supply? So, the with power supplies and overclocking, if you have a really, really bad power supply, then it'll actually affect your overclocking. But you need to have, like, trash ripple suppression. Like, really, really awful. Like, borderline out of ATX specification. Um, but for... But then if you get into, like, power supplies, pretty much... Basically... Anything from Seasonic or Delta or uh, Superflower is fine. Pretty much anything from them. Um, any of the sort of better units, not the, like they do, pretty much every company on earth makes like bottom of the barrel garbage. If, if you go low enough in price, you'll find something that's terrible. But you can get like good overclocking power supplies from Seasonic and all that. I use this has a rebranded 850 watt Seasonic bronze, 80 plus bronze uh, power supply, and it's fine. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, the Superflower LedX, that's there. They have LedX Gold and Platinum, I think, is the two platforms that Superflower has. So, yeah, those are, that, that's like a good power supply platform. I'll post the, well, I'll do the Catzilla score right now. Which, I don't actually know how to validate Catzilla scores. <laughs> I never use the Catzilla website, except to download Catzilla. I forgot I'm still on stream. Um, uh, Corsair AX1200 watt power supply gold for seven years. Yeah, that's a great power supply. That's a... Uh, the AX series from Corsair was like top of... is top of the line for ages and ages and ages. Max DRAM voltage for Sandy Bridge, 1.7 volts. Uh, someone told me to up the VCCIO. Sandy Bridge E doesn't have VCCIO, does it? I can't remember. It's way too long ago. Um, I'm not sure about the VCCIO, but the DRAM, you shouldn't go over 1.7-ish. I haven't really looked into uh, FSP uh, power supplies that much. They don't get reviewed very much, which is the main problem I have with them. It's like, I don't buy FSP power supplies because it's so hard to find good reviews from uh, of them. So, yeah, but it's like the few reviews I've seen, it's not terrible. Uh, max DRAM for Skylake, 1.45 or 1.5, depending on which you feel like going with. EVGA Supernovas are rebranded Superflower LedX platforms. I have a 1600 watt G2 Supernova. Uh, G1 are terrible, though. G1 series is awful. Uh, G2 series is great, P2 series is great, G3, uh, like, t 2 series and later is fine, from what I've heard. Uh, thermal take 530 watt can pull over 730 watt from the wall. Yeah, that's normal. It's a thermal take. <laughs> it's terrible. And that's also, like, efficiency-wise... Uh, let's see, 7... 730 slash 530. That's a really bad efficiency. That's like 70%. That's god awful. 
Yeah, that's the 72%. Like, if your power supply is rated for 530 watts and it's pulling 730 watts from the wall, you're not far from killing it. So, I'd be careful with that. Because that is really, really bad. Like, you shouldn't ever have your power supply below 80% efficiency. That's awful. The, the, um... I don't do Corsair power supplies based on, on the basis that they're kind of... Like, they cost more than a lot of the competing power supplies, and they're not that much better. So, yeah. Uh, max voltage for a 5820K, 1.35 volts. It's Haswell E, damn it. It's the same as all the other Haswell E. 1.35 volts core, 1.97 volts... Well, 2 volts VCC in. Above that, you don't really... Well, yeah. doesn't really help to go above that. What does upping the timings do? It slows the... I don't really want to explain how RAM works right now. <laughs> um, RAM has a frequency and it has timings. Timings tell you how long certain... Oper tell the RAM how long an operation in the RAM needs to be... D how long it has to do an operation in clock cycles. So like 2000 megahertz CL10 has the same column access latency as 1000 megahertz CL5. It's the same latency to do the column access because you're waiting five clock cycles. Because at 1000 megahertz you're doing it in five clock cycles, at 2000 megahertz you're doing it in 10 clock cycles. The thing about RAM is as you raise the frequency up and up and up, generally your latency, your timings have to go like, you sort of get a curve where the timing sort of flatline like you can't go below a certain timing but as you keep raising the frequency your timings start rising faster than your frequency raises so you need to strike a balance for the performance you can't just keep cranking the frequency up and loosening the timings to hell because that's you'll lose you end up with slower ram by the end of it um be quiet it rebrands i think they rebrand seasonic i think they're fine um just look up reviews there's johnny guru dot like I don't do power supply reviews. Just go to like johnnyguru.com and just look up whatever PSU you want. That's how I do my shopping is like I go to the store, I take, I want X watts of power supply. Then I find something that's, then I look, find the cheapest power supply that I, I, I consider buying. Well, I usually filter out like unknown brands, but you know, I, I check, basically I go look at the cheapest power supply there is for that wattage and then I go see if Johnny Guru has a review of it. If they have a review and say it's good, I buy it. Solved. <laughs> That's how I do power supply shopping. Um, so, yeah. Uh, two, what, 229 minutes, real bench. I mean, if you think that's a good enough stability test for you, then sure, it's stable. I haven't ever stability tes tested this thing. Like, the thing that's currently running the stream, that's never had a stability test. Um, sometimes it crashes. <laughs> uh, is it a good idea to make a custom LN2 paw? Hard question. I would say, like, yes, it can be done, but to some extent, I'm inclined to believe that you'll get better performance from, like, you know, like Der Bauer or Kingpin pots that are, like, because those guys have experience with making a lot of LN2 pots. So they know what they're doing. So I, like, yeah, I don't know. If, if it's not, like, if, if it's not a huge issue for you to make your own pot, then go right for it. Um, but if it's, if it's like, 
you know, if you can afford to do it, go go ahead because it's awesome to have your own custom LN2 pot. But yeah, um, that that's a like I'm not really experienced in that. Uh, how accurate is hardware monitor power consumption values, especially CPU power consumption? Software power consumption values are generally, except for NVIDIA cards, are generally trash. NVIDIA cards, they work because NVIDIA has like a very accurate uh, Texas Instruments current monitoring chip on their cards. And then they have shunt resistors for every single 12-volt power, power input on the card. And they monitor every single one of them so they get really, like they get relatively, well, they're not super accurate, but way more accurate than everything else. Whereas most VRMs on the motherboard use current sensing methodologies, which are basically like, hey, it's plus minus 10%. You know, it, it'll be up and down by 10%. And honestly, just software current readings are terrible in general. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't do, I don't trust power consumption readings from software. They're just not that great. Uh, attempted to write read-only memory BSOD. I think that's a RAM error. Basically, everything that isn't a CPU, like, there's a few that are really obvious CPU errors. Everything else is RAM. <laughs> that's sort of how I deal with it, and it generally works. Um, actually, Player.net published a really good list of uh, BSODs and what they mean. Let's see if I can find that. Uh... Yeah, quick so Here we go, found it. You want this. Uh, GPU-Z power usage on an RX 480. Um, so the thing about RX 480s is they only measure vCore VRM power consumption. They do not measure memory or fan or auxiliary or display drive like everything else on the card it doesn't know it doesn't have there's no measuring circuitry on any of the other vrms at all there's just nothing um so basically you're only seeing core current consumption which is fine because in my opinion it's fine but if you're trying to gauge like if you're going close to the limit of your power supply off of the gpu z power reading for an rx 480 is really bad it's not going to tell you the right thing Basically, a good rule of thumb is just do like plus 50 watts or plus uh, plus 40 to 50 watts over what GPU-Z is reading, and that'll give you what you're probably close to that in reality is what you're going to be pulling. So, yeah. The other thing is, it'll show you, car like, is that constant power draw or just spike? Because GPUs will spike really, really high for power consumption. Um... Like, GPUs will spike super high power consumption, but they won't, like, average power consumption will be completely different. And, and NVIDIA actually, um, that's actually something I want to, when I do the GTX 1070 video, I'm going to go into that because NVIDIA actually have, like, the reason why you can power mod the NVIDIA cards a certain way, which I plan to do, is because they have a circuit there to compensate for sudden voltage, like, sudden current consumption swings, because the car GPUs do that a lot. Um, so, yeah. Good memory stability test other than MemTest. MemTest is the only one I'm aware of. So, yeah. I'm not aware of another good memory stability test. It's like, yeah. Constant 240. Constant 240 for 1.2 volts? That's a bit high. But I do seem to remember, like, I think my reference RX 480 at 1.225 was doing, like, 225 watts. So maybe you just have a really, really leaky graphics card, like, a card that leaks a lot of power. Um, and that might explain the really high power draw. So, yeah. Will next week be Ryzen overclocking? Ideally. Um, I, ideally, it will be Ryzen next week, so, yeah. Um, Asus Aura corrupted my RAM SPD. Do you know about the... How, no idea. I never use Asus Aura. I just leave it on the default setting, so no idea. Uh, will I get Threadripper? I really, really want to get Threadripper. Um, the question is, will I have enough money, or will I be able to talk AMD into sending one? From what I've heard, AMD UK representatives don't like sending out samples, so 
yeah, that's that kind of that's probably not going to happen. So, yeah. Uh, oh, doesn't MSI Gaming the I heard that the MSI Gaming X uh, card has like some really high power draw for no apparent reason. I I don't know. I'd have to test the card. And I'd need, like, an RX 480 to compare against. And I still need more power consumption testing equipment for GPUs. Because right now I can only measure 8-pin power draw, not the whole thing. Um, how much do I think Threadripper, Threadripper will cost? So, Threadripper, the cool thing about Threadripper is it's made by gluing 8-core Ryzen CPUs together. Literally, that's what they're doing. It's genius. Like, th that is... Absolutely. Uh, GPU Z 8 pin. No. GPU Z for an RX 480 is only reading VRM power consumption, regardless of where the VRM, uh, V core VRM power consumption. Uh, you know, V core VRM power consumption, and regardless of if it pulls that off the PCIe slot or the 8 pin, it always only reads that on RX 480s. So I, I think maybe the Gaming X actually reads more, but I'm not sure. I'd have to get a, like, I, I, I'd have to get the card. I have no idea. It's like nobody in the review business tells you about how the, how the card does its power measurement or anything. Nobody cares. Um, but, yeah, so Threadripper is really, really cool. Back to Threadripper, because I actually kind of, I'm, I'm excited for it. Threadripper is really, really cool because they're gluing 8-core eight core, eight uh, Ryzen CPUs together. So theoretically, <laughs> is it... They could essentially just take 1700s, like Ryzen 7 1700s, and just glue those together. And that's a 300 quid CPU, right? Uh, admittedly, there's going to be some extra cost with the packaging and the sub... Like, I think... I don't think they're using an interposer. They're using the multi-chip... Uh, there's, like, a bunch of multi-chip technologies that are employed. Um, but... I don't think, if they're not using inter Interposer, there shouldn't be a huge price hike from gluing the cores together. And in which case, we like, I'm pretty sure that whatever in, whatever price Intel's 12 core is at, Threadripper will be either at the same price or lower. Because AMD is way, like, AMD has a way easier time making Threadrippers than Intel has making a 12 core. So, like, yeah, I, I'm super, super excited. Uh, for Threadripper. But the thing about, uh, the thi like, Threadripper is just, like, it's, it's going to be expensive. But, yeah, like, I really want to get one of those. I somehow got a 6950X. Hopefully I'll be able to get a Threadripper. Um, but I'm not sure. So, yeah, I might even, like, if I can't get the 16, I might go for, like, the 14 core or something. Because it's, like, so many cores. <laughs> Can you imagine the three D Mark physics score on one of those things? It's gonna be huge. Um, silly name, Threadripper. I honestly, at this point, kind of, like I personally don't care what they call it. Um, you know, I'm worried. Like from what I've heard of the rumors, I'm more annoyed at the numbering scheme because we're supposed to have like 1998, what 1998 X, 1997, like the. I don't like really large, like, I really wish they had a simplified numbering scheme on them. I don't really care that they're called Threadripper. I think the name, it's it's a bit long, and it's a bit dumb, but, you know, it, it's a 32-thread CPU, so it kind of fits. Um, does 3D Mark even scale uh, so many threads? I think it maxes out at 32. I think it maxes out at 32. I don't think it goes past 32, but 32, I think you can still do physics. So, yeah. Yeah, but uh, Bulldozer and Piledriver were code names. Threadripper is literally the branding that they're going for, but... I mean, it's like, what else could they have come up for? Because if they came up with some random board... Like, they can't use FX. Right, FX is just, like, destroyed. You can never, ever call another CPU an F... AMD can never, ever, ever call another CPU an FX anything. Because the FX is just like, these suck. <laughs> Everybody knows they suck. Um, yeah, Epic is dumb. 
I'm Threadripper over Epic any day. Um, so, yeah. But I, I'm I'm excited for Threadripper, and I'm all like X299. Like, X299 looks cool from sort of an overclocking perspective because it looks like Intel is going to unify the ridiculous IPC of Z270. Like, you can't deny it. I really want to do a live stream where we do some benchmarking on the Apex with the 7700K and we're just going to be doing, like, Unige in Heaven. And it's crazy. Like, it scores so good in Unige in Heaven. It's like... 7700K is just a Unigen Heaven death machine. And it's like X299 has KB Lake X, which is just basically a 7700K on steroids, which is a 6700K on steroids. So it's just like, yes, more gigahertz! And so basically, you'll be able to buy one X299 motherboard, and you'll have your really high IPC4 core, and you'll have your 3D Mark Dooms, you know, 3D Mark Physics death machine in the form of a 12 core overpriced as hell i9 CPU from Intel which you'll have to sell an arm and a leg to get but you know it kind of works for for overclocking it's a cool platform for consumers i think it's kind of dumb but you know kind of works is a 2600k at 4.7 faster than a 3700k 30 uh, 3770k uh, is the 3770k also at 4.7 gigahertz because that's the thing, there's like a 10% IPC difference between those two. Uh, any ideas to play with undervolting the 1070? Undervolting is lame. And this is not actually hardcore power savings, this is actually hardcore overclocking. I don't do undervolting. So, yeah. Um, if the prices don't come down, we will see built. <laughs> I'm not gonna, I need hands to be able to build computers and overclock, so that's not happening. Um, so, yeah, that's a thing. Um, I kind of want to pack it up here. Also, I, one thing I really want to do uh, for Ryzen is I'm gonna do a test, idle power draw, all the just Power sa all the power savings garbage versus no power savings garbage. I think a lot of you will be surprised because there's like no difference. I just need to get like the, I need to shoot the video for it. Um, so. Yeah. I only need one kidney. What do kidneys do? I don't know. Biology is not my strong suit. Yeah, see, I think without kidneys, I wouldn't survive many more cans of this. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to be keeping those. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you know what, let's pack it in here. Uh, C states are dumb, like seriously, it's like on X79, okay, no. Pack it in, and I think CU on, I'm thinking of doing the GTX 1070 uh, volt modding as a live stream. Um... So, yeah, it's like, yeah, that's the thing. It's like the power, the power states on desktops, it's like minus 10 watts, maybe, if you're lucky. Uh, and, and at that point, it's like, it's a, like, not even a light bulb. Who cares? So, yeah, I'm thinking of doing the GTX 1070 uh, voltage modding on Wednesday. We'll see, we'll see. Like, because the thing is, like... If I wanted to do it as a YouTube video, I'd like to know what I'm doing ahead of time. Except I already know that I have no idea how to work with an NVIDIA card. So it's just... Because the, the thing is, the UP9511 is a bit of an interesting voltage controller, and I'm not quite sure if what I want to do to it will work the way I expect it to. And if it doesn't, then it really won't work as a YouTube video, And if it do in which case I'd rather prefer to do it as a live stream. 
So, yeah. Um, that's sort of that. Um, that's that for this stream. Thank you for watching. There's You can like, share, subscribe, buy some shirts, donate to the Patreon, donate to the PayPal. Uh, I'm selling out now. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and see you next time. I really hope they don't ban any of my submissions for the Summer Spectacular. Otherwise, I'm not in the lucky prize pool. Well, that's it for this one, so goodbye. <laughs>